Welcome guys, it, this is 39 and welcome to yet another brand new Let's Play. Now, even though I'm still on the process of Pokemon Insurgents, and I thought, you know what? Yeah, we need to have something else besides that, besides many other YouTubers do that. So, today, I am happy to present you with, with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now, I am a big fan of the Ace Attorney series. I mean, I mean a, fr a friend of mine, uh, thank you to her, uh, she introduced me to this series. Now, uh, okay, uh, you're not here to see that. You're here to see me play a game. Well, some of you are. But if you, before we begin, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, because if you don't, then you will be in a trial. Which is what this game's all about. Without further ado, let us begin. Episode 1, the first turnabout. me. I can't get caught. Not like this. I, I gotta find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh! Uh, hiya, Chief! Woo! I'm glad I can make it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favour. A favour? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kinda owe my current job to him. He's uh, one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. Must be a pretty big depth. Uh, Mr. Phoenix. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Isn't that your client screaming over there? Yep, that's him. Death, despair, oh. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna die. Well, I'm gonna get it demonetized straight away. <laughs> it sounds like he wants to die. Hmm, definitely gonna get demonetized for that. But then again, I have no monetization on my channel. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! <laughs> what? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I... I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her! I can't! Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? Hmm... The person responsible for your girlfriend, girlfriend's death? The newspaper says it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case uh, is a fairly simple one. Oh yeah, murder case. Very simple. A w young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating girl. Oh wow. <laughs> Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school ha had a saying, Whenever something smells, it's usually the butts. 
I like I like this school. Makes the best a pun. <laughs> In the twenty three years I've known him, it's usually been true. <laughs> he has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know uh, better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. Yep, we are literally uh, helping our best friend of the game, Innocent. And now, we are in the courtroom number two. The court is now in session for the trial, Mr. Larry Buds. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Well, isn't he going to be a pain in the butt? <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Uh -huh. Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the, f the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thanks. Thank you, Your Honor. Hmm. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Sure thing, Mr. Santa Claus. Yes, Your Honor. Hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and consciously. I think that's what he said. Please take the name of the defendant in this case. Larry Bucks. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. Oh, I know this one. Glad I've read the case report over and over so many times. Oh wait, cover to cover. I dick, I cannot read today. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. No! No, wait! I forgot! I'm drawing a total, total blank here! Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name! Oh, the, uh, the victim? Uh, of course I know the victim's name! I, um, just forgot. Temporarily! I think I have feel a migraine coming on. Look, the defendant's name is listed in the court records. Just touch the court record button and check it any time, okay? Aye aye, Chief. As you can okay, as you can tell from that little lag, I am playing on this Moon Emulator. Now, we got things right here. First, my attorney's badge. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Next, we got Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death, uh Um July 31st, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. A cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. And here is what we got. Mia Fei, Chief Attorney at Fei and Co. My boss and a very good defense attorney, age 27. Larry Burks, age 23. The defendant in this case, a likable guy who was my friend in grade school. Cindy Stone, 22. The victim of this case, a model. She lived in an apartment by herself. Winston Payne, 52. The prosecutor for this case lacks a presence, generally bad at getting his points across. You barely even met. You barely know the guy, Phoenix. Don't make assumptions. Just. Uh, I mean, then again, he is a pain, literal pain, so. Yeah. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Mia Fey. Um, Mia Fey? What, what? What? How can I be the victim? Oh, right. So, sorry, I, uh, it was the first name that popped into my head and... Call record button. Remember to use it when you're in a pinch. 
Let me ask that one again. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? It's Cindy. Cinderblock! Oh, um. Okay. <laughs> uh, why does Phoenix sound like Santa Claus all of a sudden? Oh, um, was it Miss Block? Miss Cinderblock? The person in question was a victim of murder, not. ill. Ah, uh, Naming Mr. Wright. Right? If you forget something, just touch the court record button to help you remember. A mistake in court could cost you the case. I'll ask you again. Let's hear your answer. Who is the victim in this case? Okay, I know I can clear those two on purpose. I don't want to... I... When I first played it, I really wanted to get everything right. <laughs> I said right. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct! Now, tell me, what was, it, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Hit with a blunt object. I'm not gonna... Uh, look, I, I would want to take every single possible answer, but I really don't want to uh, spend a long time recording. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct! You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. Imagine if I, uh, if I got it wrong and he's like, Nope! Alright, Mia Faye, you continue. You seem so much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Rana. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first, a question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honor? As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Explain to the court just what that object was. The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts this. Accepts it into evidence. Statue added through the court record. I mean, it knows how to make a good pose. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. I keep forgetting her voice. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne! Okay, I, I, as much as I want to do the kind of voice he did in the anime, I'm just gonna like, just give him Santa Claus. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness? Nope, I... The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Bats, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecutions later, so be careful. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Ahem. Mr. Butt, is it not, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Oh, wow. Hey, what's it, buddy? We were going together. We were like Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um, did they all die? Exactly. I wasn't done. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Birch, what would you describe is generally what you mean by what we mean by dumb? In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing a dump. Oh wow, she was too, too timing. Or oh, oh she she was cheating on him. I think she had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies, all of it. Lies. I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day sh she died. Damn. Hmm. Indeed. She appears to have returned the day before she was murdered. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. Every year she had several sugar daddy. For a game that was released around the early 2000s, uh, late 90s, I am kind of surprised that the word sugar, sugar daddy was a term back in the days. Daddies? Sugar? 
Yes, on a man who gave her money and gift. She took the money and used it to support her lifestyle. Okay, you know what? I know exactly the best voice for Larry. <clears throat> oh, like, dude! We can uh, clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Burns, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong direction. Should I... Yeah, no. We do not want to ruin our chances. My client has no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to the case. Oh. <laughs> Don't, Nick, what do you mean, irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna drop dead instead. Like, yeah, when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? Oh, stop him. We do not want him to continue. Otherwise, uh, chances of him getting the guilty verdict will skyrocket. I'll send him a signal. Lie like a dog. Oh, uh, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember. Well, then, we'll just have to remind you. I've got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that I can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who uh, found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fling uh, the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawhit to the stand. I guess you could say he saw it. Sorry, yeah. I think that was what they were going with. Mr. Sawhit, you sell newspaper subscriptions to this. Uh, correct? Oh, uh, well, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawhit, you may proceed with your testimony. I forgot what voice I gave him. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Yeah, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't, uh, figured it out, m the majority of the game is more text-based. Anyway, a testimony. Witness account. I was going door-to-door, -door, selling news, sub selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought I thought to kill, call the police immediately. However, the, the phone in her uh, apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to be to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones d do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawhead used was one of those. 
Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your per usual. Per usual. All right, now we got a lot of evidence already. No, Mr. Wright. Yes, um, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross examination. Why did I say it like that? <laughs> cross examination, Your Honor. You know when you like examine what the uh, vic uh, the witness just said. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Um, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, well, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lo- Well, well, duh, it's not like he's gonna, no, uh, say- Oh, hey, I actually killed the man, as we saw in the preview before the episode began. Yeah, I highly doubt it. Your client is innocent, right? Then, that wit witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is it your client- or is your client really guilty? No, how do I prove he's not? Phoenix, how long have you been working with Mia? Like, you'd think that you would have learned stuff like that by now. Did you not do, like, mock trials in, uh, in a university of law? You're the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness testimony. Then, once you find the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Why do I feel like he still hasn't got it? Touch the court record button and point out the contradictions in the testimony. Witness account. Now, normally, okay, I would just like, um, I would normally uh, press them, but due to circumstances that, oh, actually, before I start, I actually want to try something out. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, the microphone sitting uh, on the emulator doesn't work yet. Well, I guess I'm just gonna rely on tapping. But anyway, as earlier when we read the autopsy report, that they said that it was around 4 to 5 p.m. So clearly, he does not know what happened, like the actual time. So what we gotta do is like go through. Oh, there we go. We present present the autopsy report, as you see, he claims that the time was 1pm, yet on the autopsy report it says between 4 to 5pm. Clearly, there is a massive contra- a massive contradiction! You found the body at 1pm, you sure? Yes, it was 1pm for a certain. Frankly? <laughs> he said Frank. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no, but the uh, find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Duh. Oh, that. Oh, ah. Uh. Oh God, that is. Death to my ears. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. <clears throat> Mr. Sawhit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, gee, that's a very good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradiction. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now! Would you care to give your testimony again? Oh boy. The time of discovery. Yeah, I'm probably going to split this trial in parts. Yeah, with that other way, let us, well, 
begin. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it wasn't... But it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video or taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Hmm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped recording program. Mr. Wright, you may begin your class. You may cross examine the witness. Right. You know what to do? I've got this one. <laughs>